The M4 is a classic mainstay in Call of Duty games set in modern times, and in Modern Warfare 2 it returns, this time looking similar to a Geisley URGI, or known as the M4 SOP Mod Block 3, if you care about those SOCOM designations. Historically, the M4 has fit two archetypes within the Call of Duty franchise, either it is the low damage, high fire rate assault rifle, or it is the all rounder, in where it doesn't excel in any stat, but its consistency in all areas make it a favorite. In the case of Modern Warfare 2, it seems as though the M4 occupies the all-rounder category, although I do believe it actually has some of the lowest recoil, or at least the most controllable recoil out of all the assault rifles in this game, and it does seem to come with a fast fire rate. However, this is not a pea shooter. It does do pretty good damage and has a pretty good time to kill. I actually really enjoy using the M4 in this game, and you'll see that I kind of kick ass with this gun. In fact, I specifically chose this gameplay to show you just how good I am at this game. Haters will say Photoshop. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> We're gonna leave that one in. We're gonna leave that one in. All right. Anyway, first attachment. Thankfully, this time around, it took me long enough to make this video. That true game data does have the stats for the majority of attachments in this game, and I can screenshot them and put them on the screen. We'll start off with the first one, which is the optic, the SZSRO7, I believe. It is basically a classic aim point or an old aim point depending on what you want to call it. It lowers your aim down sight speed by 20 milliseconds, but you can tune the weapon to increase the aim down sight speed or make it worse in exchange for getting flinch resistance. I believe in the video I do have it tuned for faster aim down sight speed, so it's not really hurting me all that much. Now if you wanted me to talk about meta for a second, there are sights that offer the same magnification but with a better sight picture and only a minus 10 aim down sight speed downside rather than the minus 20. However, you know, they're often lacking in drip. For the most part, these big optics, they look really cool. Plus, the entire purpose of the series is to run attachments that I find on other characters and put them in this game, not really to make meta attachments. The weapon tuning makes these setups a lot more usable than they were in Modern Warfare 2019. I will tell you, it is a lot more fun to record gameplay for this game. The actual side picture itself is really great, there's that black line and the basic red dot in the middle, but it's also big enough that I don't lose track of my targets when they're in my sights. It works pretty great as you can see, I can track really well when using it in the gameplay, though the downside to the optic is the overall screen real estate. As you can see, the lens cover actually takes up a decent chunk of the screen when you're aiming down sights, and on a competitive level, it's really you know, completely useless to have that there, you'd rather use another smaller sight. As for my conclusions on this optic as an attachment, it is in competition with the rest of the 1x magnification optics, and for the most part it loses unfortunately, and as I mentioned before, the more or less the only reason you would use this is because it looks really cool. It is important to note that there is a flaw in TrueGameData.com. It is unable to tell any changes within a hipfire, so some attachments are listed as having no benefit despite the fact that they do make a difference in-game. So this applies to the following attachment, which is the foregrip. If you were to look at the screenshot on the screen right now, it kind of makes the attachment look terrible. Minus 4.5% recoil in every direction in exchange for significantly lowering your maneuverability and increasing your ADS time. But if you were to check what it says in game, it also increases your hip fire, both accuracy and control, and makes your screen wobble less when you're aiming down sight and strafing. It's really up to you to figure out if this attachment is good for you or not. It does significantly hamper your mobility, but it also works well with the hip fire lasers and other attachments that can increase hip fire. So if you're one of those players who likes to go close quarters, it would work pretty well for you. When it comes to being an attachment that lowers recoil specifically, there are better foregrips that lower the recoil even more than this one does that come with significantly less downsides. In exchange, they don't have anything to do with hip fire though. I think it's important to note that this foregrip does not list aiming stability as one of the benefits, so don't go in here expecting that it's going to improve that. Now for those of you who don't know, aiming stability is also known as idle sway, and in this game, idle sway will still occur when you're, you're shooting in a firefight, so your gun might actually just drift off target on its own. In essence, this attachment tries to do it all, and it's really up to you to figure out if you want to go for a general all-rounder build, or if you want to specialize and get one of the four grips dedicated for aiming down sights, or one of those four grips that is great for just hip fire. I'm actually not sure if there are four grips that are just great at hip fire, so maybe not. 
This attachment is pretty good for the M4 though. As I mentioned, it is an all-rounder assault rifle with a high fire rate. So it pretty much works for all the strengths of the M4 because the M4 has no weaknesses. In conclusion, the Bruin Warrior Grip is pretty good if you're trying to make an all-around firearm. Just keep an eye on the downsides such as hip walking speed and aim down sight speed, though with tuning you can alleviate these as well. Moving on to the laser attachment, the Schlager Peckbox 4. It's only listed upside is that it has faster aim down sight speed and no visible downside, though I believe you can see the blue laser on a wall, though you cannot see the beam itself if you're fighting against someone using this attachment. Outside of that, true game data confirms that there really are no downsides to using this attachment outside of using up an attachment slot and the aforementioned laser visibility on the wall. And in the Season 2 update, you can now tune lasers. So for this video, I actually gave it faster sprint to fire speed and an even higher aim down sight speed bonus. Though, to be honest, because weapon tuning isn't available to be seen on TrueGameData.com, I can't tell how much of a difference I made, but it probably works considering weapon tuning doesn't seem to have been bugged in any way. Since it's such a simple attachment, we'll get to a simple conclusion. The answer is this is an extremely good attachment, just use it. If your gun is slow and you want it to be faster, equip this. If you have, if you have four attachment slots and you have no idea what to put in the fifth, just use this. It literally just gives you bonuses for the most part, with almost no downside, unless someone's staring at a wall and sees a little blue dot. In that case, they're very perceptive, perceptive and they might kick your ass the game. Now the next attachment is the suppressor, it's the FSS Covert V, or potentially the Covert 5, I'm not sure if it's a Roman numeral, but a fun little fact is that originally I had a different suppressor for this build, until I looked at M4A1 in promotional artwork, particularly Shattered Connexion, in a lot of those artworks, her suppressor isn't smooth, and it has like these squares on it, similar to how the FSS Covert V has squares on it in this game. Since the promotional art is newer than her Mod 3 art, I decided to go for that to keep it up with a more modern version of M4A1. As for what it actually does, it's a suppressor, so it's going to make your gun quieter. And it does boost your bullet velocity, in particular it boosted by 15%. It also has the unintended side effect of increasing your range by 1.2%, which is pretty much completely useless, so don't count on this as boosting your range, just count on it on boosting the bullet velocity. It also comes with a 34 millisecond aim down sight speed reduction, which isn't too bad, it's pretty much in line with what the tactical suppressors from Modern Warfare 2019 did. It also increases your recoil smoothness, but to be honest, recoil smoothness doesn't seem all that important. It doesn't affect the magnitude of your recoil. Uh, Exclusive Ace had issues identifying what recoil smoothness is and called it useless, and even True Game Data is just like, yeah, it's, it is something. He notices a little bit of effect, but it's very little. Outside of the aim down sight speed downside, which is measured on true game data, the in-game it also says it lowers your aiming stability, and I mentioned before that this increases idle sway, which actually might make you go off target. Once again though, tuning may allow you to increase your aiming stability and not have to deal with this downside as much. Overall, this suppressor is middle of the road as far as they go. At the low end, you have the Echoline GSX, which has the only downside of lowering your range, but giving you sound suppression, and at the high end, they have extra damage range, extra bullet velocity, recoil steadiness, in exchange for a lot more downsides. So this one just sort of gives you higher bullet velocity with, you know, just slower aim down sight speed. Very simple. If you value bullet velocity and you want to keep stacking it on your gun, I would equip this attachment. Before we get to the barrel attachment, I actually wanted to talk about why I chose this one in particular. You see, M4A1 Mod 3 uses a quad rail. This is not a quad rail, but there is the extended barrel portion of M4A1 Mod 3's gun. As you can see, the rail itself ends early while the barrel continues. There is only one attachment in this game that is like that, and that is the 14-inch carbine shroud. Unfortunately, the shroud itself is not a quad rail, but I believe this gives a better silhouette to the gun than the actual 11.5-inch quad rail barrel that exists in the game. To sum up the 14-inch carbine shroud, you basically get 9% less recoil in all directions, 10.5% more bullet velocity, and a ADS reduction of 40 milliseconds, and also just slower movement in general across all ranges of motion. Basically, your gun is better at all things in long range, and worse at all the things you care about in close range. It's honestly such a simple attachment that I'm just going to say, if you care about shooting people far away, use this. If you don't care about people shooting far away, don't use this. 
I do have to say though, that type of shroud is such a classic look for an AR. You know, I saw that stuff in photos of this, the 80s, the 90s. It's full of drip, so I honestly, I would 100% accept someone using this just for the fashion alone, especially because it has that barrel part poking out from the shroud. It, that in of itself is a style. Before I make a conclusion, let's recap. The optic is pretty much one of the coolest looking classic optics you get, but functionality wise it's not entirely there. The barrel makes you good at long range, makes you not good at close range. The laser, aim down sight speed faster, and because I tuned it, sprint out faster. The suppressor, good for long range, uh, makes your gun slower at close range. And the final attachment would be the warrior grip, which gives you less recoil, good for long range, but better hip fire, good for close range. So once again, this entire setup is actually balanced as an all-rounder, just like the M4 already is in the game. I mentioned this at the start of the video, but if you'd like to notice, I am absolutely whooping ass with this gun, and I am not that incredible of a player, you know? I only have like a 1.06 KD. Of course, you have to take the quality of opponents into account, but from a usability perspective, I never felt like I was being restricted by this setup. In fact, I felt very comfortable using it. I felt like I could hit fire up close, fine. I could shoot people far, fine. I was having a... fun time using this in almost every map I was playing it with. It made for a variable, very enjoyable experience, not a variable experience. In conclusion, yeah, there's absolutely no problems with this setup. Use it if you want, and more importantly, because weapon tuning was buffed in Season 2, tune the attachments to your playstyle. You want to go up close, tune it for up close. You want to focus in the back, you want to shoot people far away, focus it to shoot far away, though I would honestly put a magnified optic at that point. But anyway, weapon tuning really opens up the possibilities of having guns perform the way you want in this game, and I highly encourage everyone research how to use weapon tuning and to tune the weapons in the way that you like to use them for, because it really makes recording this series fun for me, something that wasn't often in Modern Warfare 2019. Now if you remember, originally I said I was going to do another AK, probably the RPK-203 or maybe AK-74M. The reason I went for M4A1 Mod 3 was because a YouTube commenter was like, hey, could you do this? And I said, actually, yeah, I already built the uh, blueprint, so I might as well make the video. And, uh, you know, thanks for the video idea. Thanks for watching, dude. It was pretty cool to see someone comment a recommendation. That hasn't happened in a long time. So uh, thanks, and I'll probably get back to making another video at some point.